imagine a vast plain, a world of only two dimensions, on which triangles, squares, pentagons, and other figures live and move freely about. They know nothing of our three-dimensional world, but that's all about to change. Where did you come from? I come from space, the third dimension. This short clip is based on a famous book called Flatland, which is a land of only two dimensions, length and width, no height. In this land came a 3D figure and changed everything. This is much like long time back humans debated whether the earth was flat or round. Then one day we went into space, saw the earth and the debate was settled forever. Let us learn how satellites have helped us know so much more about our planet. This is a photograph of all the space debris surrounding planet Earth. Space debris means all the junk, that is all the objects that we have thrown out into space, mostly satellites. In this picture, you will notice that there is a dense amount of stuff just very close to Earth. These are the low orbit satellites. Low orbit means that they are just a few hundred kilometers away from Earth and because they are so close and with today's technology, they are capable of taking very high resolution images. Then you will also notice that around this larger circle, the objects are again dense. This is because around 36,000 kilometers away from planet Earth is the perfect orbit where the centrifugal force because of the way the satellites were sent into space and the gravity. So centrifugal force which is throwing the satellite out from planet Earth and Earth's gravity which is pulling the satellites back towards Earth are in perfect balance. So at this orbit, the two forces are perfectly balanced. This is called the geostationary orbit, which means satellites at this orbit around 36,000 kilometers from planet Earth will always focus on one part of the Earth. So these are the two types of satellites mainly that we have, the low orbit satellites and the geostationary satellites. The low orbit satellites can take really high resolution images of the planet. So for example, here is a satellite image of a hurricane. The problem with such visible photography is that it needs light because the cameras on the satellite work same as any regular camera and they, they capture the light which is reflected from the object. And hence, these satellites are not capable of taking photographs at night. To overcome this, the other way satellites tell us about our planet is by using infrared cameras. Infrared cameras capture the thermal heat that is emanated from an object. So in this image, whatever is more red means it's warm and whatever is yellow or green or blue means it's relatively colder. This is an image of the same hurricane that you saw earlier. This is another example of a thermal image. So the good part about thermal imaging is that it doesn't matter if it's day or night, the satellite is able to capture what is happening and interpret it by looking at the changes in the heat. So for example, here is a image of clouds over India and from the color of the uh, infrared image, you can say clouds which were in the cooler spectrum, relatively speaking, clouds are very cold. So the, the one that you are seeing in white are around minus 15 degrees Celsius and the ones that you are seeing in, in red, they are around minus 70 degrees Celsius. The ability of low orbit satellites to take high resolution photographs has become so good that they can take a clear photograph of an object on earth which is only 30 centimeters.
That is why you will notice that in earlier times, the camouflage worn by the armed forces was made to blend with nature. But today, the satellites can take clear photographs of things measuring just 30 centimeters. And spy satellites are even more powerful. Thus, the camouflage is no more about blending with nature, but more about hiding from these satellites. That is why the new camouflage has these pixels to fool the satellites. There are many types of satellites. Based on the function they perform, they could be remote sensing satellites. These satellites have sensors to measure temperature, humidity, cloud composition, an altimeter to measure the height of objects, light sensors that measure reflected light, scatterometer to measure radiation, and more such equipment. Weather prediction, for example, is based on data provided by remote sensing satellites. Another type of satellites are communication satellites. They have equipment to receive and transmit radio telecommunication signals. Mobile phones, for example, rely on these type of satellites. Navigation satellite are another category of satellites. GPS used in mobile phones or in vehicles depends on navigation satellites that can calculate the position, speed and direction of a vehicle and provide direction to the chosen destination. In the next video, we will look at how the data provided by these satellites is used to learn more about our own planet, Earth.